We now know that the Soviet Union, not content with Dr. Castro's oath of fealty, not content with the destruction of Cuban independence, not content with the extension of Soviet power into the Western Hemisphere, not content with a challenge to the inter-American system and to the United Nations Charter, has decided to transform Cuba into a base for communist aggression, into a base for putting all of the Americas under the nuclear gun, and thereby to intensify the Soviet diplomacy of blackmail in every part of the world. The United States' answer to what Adlai Stevenson termed Soviet blackmail in Cuba was a quarantine of all offensive weapons being shipped from Russia to that island fortress. The U.S. threw up a steel fence prepared to stop any vessel carrying materials of war. In Cuba itself, 100,000 men were put under emergency orders as they had been during past invasion scares. The waterfront in Havana and along other parts of the coast bristled with gun emplacements as the Cuban regime waited to see what their bosses in the Kremlin were to do. Cuba became the focus of world attention. Here centered the most critical threat of global war since the surrender of Germany 17 years ago. Castro has put every able-bodied man through military training. He has even armed some as young as 12 years of age, and authorities assemble thousands in cities and villages for patriotic rallies. As in the past, these rallies are designed to whip up hate of what Castro calls Yankee imperialistic warmongers. Through suggestions that a UN team inspect missile sites, Castro said that they had better come ready for combat. He went on to call President Kennedy a pirate for setting up the quarantine. The United States arrived at the decision for an arms blockade after studying reconnaissance photographs made with high-powered cameras from planes flying several miles from the Cuban coast. These cameras are described as capable of spotting a golf ball on a putting green from 40,000 feet. Literally thousands of pictures can be made on each flight by these planes, and they are studied by photo interpreters who are capable of analyzing details that an untrained eye would miss. Here, for example, is a medium-range ballistic missile base that has been labeled by these specialists. Suddenly, the veil is torn from the Russian secrets. Another photo revealed a surface-to-air missile assembly depot, a base to supply the offensive sites. Russian technicians ripped through heavy jungle growth to carve out airstrips for high-performance MiG-21 jets, a plane easily capable of strikes far into the United States. In the greatest display of hemisphere solidarity since World War II, the Organization of American States unanimously endorses the actions of the United States, and many pledge arms and men to the cause. The vote is 20 to nothing, with Cuba absent, commending the U.S. for its efforts to bring about the dismantling of the missile bases. The organization votes the use of armed force to carry out the resolution sponsored by Secretary of State Dean Rusk, thus uniting all of the Americas in a common cause. Meanwhile, the United States continues to reinforce its Cuban base at Guantanamo Bay, the naval depot that Castro wants the U.S. to give up. These Marines have been assigned the job of protecting the base against any Cuban threats that might arise during the present crisis. They'll be on a 24-hour alert a first line of defense. The United States went to the UN Security Council for a resolution calling for a withdrawal of all offensive weapons from Cuba. A delegation from the island heard Utant call on both sides for a three-week freeze, but the Secretary General was told that President Kennedy wants the missiles scrapped first. Valerian A. Zorin's boss, Khrushchev, proposed that the U.S. withdraw its vessels and he would stop shipments. President Kennedy's missile scrapping demand was his reply. The U.S. resolution was firm and strongly worded. Mr. President, I am submitting today a resolution to the Security Council designed to find a way out of this calamitous situation. This resolution calls, as an, as an interim measure under Article 40 of the Charter, 
for the immediate dismantling and withdrawal from Cuba of all missile and other offensive weapons. It further authorizes and requests the Acting Secretary General to dispatch to Cuba a United Nations Observer Corps to assure and report on compliance with this resolution. Upon UN certification of compliance, it calls for the termination of the measures of quarantine against military shipments to Cuba. And in conclusion, it urgently recommends that the United States and the Soviet Union confer promptly on measures to remove the existing threat to the security of the Western Hemisphere and the peace of the world, and to report thereon to the Security Council.